This week on The Vision, persecution is coming to the church. While believers expect to share in Christ's suffering from attacks by the media, Hollywood, and government, it will be surprised to see that much of the pushback against Orthodox Christianity will come from those who claim to be Christians. Persecution madness is descending on Christ's bride. This is The Vision, written by the late David Wilkerson in 1974. When it was first published, the prophecies Wilkerson wrote about were unthinkable. Sadly, in the 21st century, these foresights now read like old news headlines. The Vision is brought to you by World Challenge, a ministry dedicated to empowering, equipping, and encouraging Christians in their daily faith. We are committed to evangelism and helping the least of these everywhere in the world. Now, Chapter 5 of The Vision, Persecution Madness, read by Jason Staples. A spirit of persecution is coming. I see an hour of persecution coming such as mankind has never before witnessed. This will be a persecution of true Jesus believers that will soon arise like a many-headed monster out of the sea. It will begin slowly and subtly, coming at a time when religious freedom appears to be at a peak. It will spread throughout the United States, Canada, and the entire world and will finally become a kind of madness. An antichrist spirit will enter the hearts of certain men in high places in government and in the judicial system, causing these officials to engage in legal maneuvers designed to harass independent churches, missionaries, and ministers. There is already much evidence that this harassment has now started. I see a time coming when nearly all evangelical missionary projects, all religious radio and TV programming, and all incorporated missionary societies will be so closely monitored, questioned, and badgered that they will be cautious of expanding in any area. The Rise of a Super World Church I see the formation of a super world church consisting of a union between liberal ecumenical Protestants and the Roman Catholic Church, joining politically hand in hand, creating one of the most powerful religious forces on earth. This super world church will be spiritual in name only, freely using the name of Jesus Christ, but will in fact be antichrist and political in many of its activities. This powerful church union will be deeply involved in social action, tremendous charity programs, and ministries of compassion. Its leaders will make sweeping statements about meeting human need by sending out a call for renewed social action, political intervention, and a greater voice in world affairs. A Sudden, Mysterious Chain of Events Just when it appears that the ecumenical movement is nearly dead, a rather mysterious chain of events will bring about the framework for this union. Rome will insist upon and receive many concessions from the Protestant ecumenical leaders. The Pope will be considered more of a political than a spiritual leader of this great union. Protestant leaders of the ecumenical movement will insist upon and receive certain concessions from Rome in exchange. They will not be asked to consider the Holy Father as the infallible head of the church and will accept his political leadership without accepting his role as Peter's successor. I am in no way suggesting that the Pope or any other church leader involved in this super church organization will be engaging in antichrist activity. The Bible has much to say on that matter, but it is not for me at this time to speculate on the subject. However, I do see something that frightens me. I see an army of career people invading the most influential posts in this super church organization. Many of them will be ungodly antichrist people obsessed with the concept that this super church must become a political power strong enough to put pressure on all those who oppose its actions, while those in the highest posts of leadership will be speaking about miracles, love, and reconciliation, hirelings who work under them will be harassing and persecuting those religious organizations opposed to their leadership. The formation of this super world church will begin in a small way. It will start with informal cooperative study and research programs. Other cooperative programs will be initiated without legal or binding commitments from Protestants or Catholics. But liberal Protestant leaders from England and the United States will join liberal Catholic theologians from Europe in pressing for an ecumenical miracle. The legal political amalgamation is yet quite distant but the informal framework for the union is already underway. Homosexuals and lesbians welcomed by super church. I see this super church in the guise of understanding, accepting homosexuals and lesbians into its membership. 
homosexual and lesbian love will be vindicated by the leadership of this church union and will not only be welcomed, but will be encouraged. Homosexual and lesbian ministers will be ordained and given places of authority in this church union and will be heralded as a new breed of pioneer, introducing new concepts of love and evangelism. I see coming in nearly every major city in the United States and around the world, homosexual and lesbian churches catering exclusively to the spiritual needs of their own kind with full recognition and support from organized religion. Sunday school and church literature will be distributed in study curriculum suggesting to children and teenagers that homosexuality is a normal and acceptable form of Christian sexual practice. Most tragic of all, I see the day coming when the majority of homosexuals will no longer seek help from the church. Instead, they will be defended by the super church and admired for their courage and willingness to be different. This super church will accommodate itself to the weaknesses of man's flesh and will set out to comfort mankind in their sins. Guilt complexes will be blamed on old-fashioned, sin-condemning preachers who speak out against the hang-ups of those who were once considered candidates for help and counseling. New teaching efforts will be focused on an attempt to enlighten men on how to live with their problems and, in fact, to enjoy these weaknesses as gifts from God. Nude Dancing in Church Nude dancing in certain of these member churches will be excused as artistic forms of worship. Men will become worshipers of the creature more than of the creator, and God will be forced to give these kinds of worshipers over to their sins. As a result, many will be given over to reprobate minds, creating a new form of mental illness that will not respond to any kind of treatment. Public nudity in any form is creature worship. Nudity in the church will not go unanswered by God. The Bible clearly states that this form of worship inevitably leads to severe mental problems. Although nude dancing will not become widespread, it will continue to be accepted by many church leaders as a legitimate expression of worshipers seeking to find the beauty of soul through the beauty of human form. Occult Practices Within the Church I believe the Super World Church will condone certain occult practices. Already, some church groups in Haiti have incorporated certain aspects of voodoo into their form of worship. Study committees will be established to defang the devil and remake his image into one of a bland non-entity not to be feared. In some of the most respected, wealthy churches in the country, seances will replace prayer meetings. A growing number of ministers will be intrigued by the supernatural claims of spiritualistic and Satanist groups. I see the day coming when those ministers who have never been very close to God will become very close to the devil. Satan will appear as an angel of light to deceive, if it were possible, the elect, the chosen of God. Satan's own ministers will appear as angels of light, and they will attempt to spread the message within the ranks of the church that Satan is not an enemy, but a friend. The super church will never officially accept occult practices outright, but phrenology, palmistry, fortune telling, and horoscopes will be widely respected. The Rise of a Supernatural Church I see a great and supernatural union of all the true followers of Jesus Christ bound together through the Holy Spirit and mutual confidence in Christ and His Word. This supernatural church of Bible believers will become a kind of underground fellowship and will include Catholics and Protestants of all denominations. It will bind together young and old, black and white, and people of all nations. While the visible super world church gains political power, this invisible supernatural church will grow tremendously in spiritual power. This power will come from persecution. The persecution madness that is coming upon this earth will drive these Christians closer together and closer to Jesus Christ. There will be less concern for denominational concepts and more emphasis on the return of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit will bring together as one people from all faiths and walks of life. 
Although this supernatural church already exists around the world, in days to come, it will become politically more and more invisible. But as persecution becomes more intense, this body of believers will become almost radical in its evangelistic efforts. This invisible church will receive supernatural unction and Holy Ghost power to continue preaching the gospel until the ends of the earth have heard. Special Persecution for Charismatic Catholics Charismatic Catholics who consider themselves members of the invisible supernatural Church of Jesus Christ will face an hour of grievous persecution. The Roman Catholic Church is about to pull in the welcome mat to all Catholics who speak with tongues and who lean toward Pentecostal teachings concerning the Holy Spirit. High-level political pressure will be placed on priests to put the fire out. Watch for the Pope to take a negative stand against the charismatic movement within the Catholic Church. The honeymoon is about over. Catholic magazines will soon begin to speak out against the movement within its ranks and call for a purging. It will begin as a slow trend, but will gather momentum quickly until all Catholics in this movement will eventually face real persecution from within their own church. The charismatic movement within the Catholic Church will become so powerful and widespread it will appear to some leaders as a threat to those who do not understand what it means. More than 500,000 may be involved in the charismatic Catholic movement within a short time. Those not in this movement will accuse it of lacking social concern and of being too oblivious to the traditions of the Church. They will be accused of turning away from the Virgin Mary and negating the authority of the Pope. Let every Catholic who boasts about having the baptism with the Holy Ghost prepare for persecution. It will not happen overnight, but most assuredly the day is coming when all Catholics who have experienced a Pentecost will be forced to determine how meaningful their baptism really is. Some will be forced to return to tradition and will allow their experience to lie dormant. Many others, however, will begin to discover that they have more Christian love, fellowship, and spiritual rapport with other Protestants and Catholics who have centered their lives around the person of Jesus Christ and the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Many will not believe me, but I see a day coming when many Protestants as well as Catholics must come out from among them. These new Christians will not call themselves Protestant or Catholic, but simply renewed Christians. Their fellowship will not be based on the experience of speaking with tongues, but will be centered on the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. Persecution of charismatic Catholics by the hierarchy of the Church will not stop the renewal within that Church. Instead, the ministry of the Holy Spirit will accomplish great miracles, and the numbers of Catholics joining renewal groups will increase under persecution. Emphasis on speaking with tongues will diminish. Instead, there will evolve a spiritual brotherhood ministry based on solid Bible teaching and mutual love and understanding for other true followers of Jesus Christ. It will become a kind of spiritual priesthood for laymen who want to help bear one another's burdens. Persecution Through a Media Struggle There is at present a tremendous freedom for the preaching of the true gospel on radio and television. Never have the doors been so open to ministers of Christ in all the media. Christians now own and operate their own radio and TV stations, and they are at liberty to pray for the sick, raise money, and promote the gospel in any way they see fit. But watch out. Persecution and harassment are coming. There is a sound of change in the air. Christ-centered radio and TV programming will become the target of satanic forces determined to force them off the airways. Already, there is a behind-the-scenes movement to establish a kind of rating system for all religious radio and TV programming. Liberal church leaders will attempt to establish a kind of screening board and force themselves on the FCC as the final authority on all paid and sustaining free time on the media. No program would be aired without their approval. The result would be a bland, Christless gospel that offended no one. The doors, now wide open, are slowly but surely going to close. Christian radio and TV stations should begin to expect persecution and harassment. Atheistic and antichrist forces are even now preparing litigation against certain religious stations and evangelists. I see Satan trying to bog down these programs and stations in red tape, legal proceedings, and tax problems. Satan will use every tactic at his disposal to remove all Christ-centered programs from the media. The message I receive for all those ministries using the media to spread the gospel is this. 
Work while it is yet day, for the night cometh when no man can work. This is the daytime of freedom and opportunity, but the nighttime of harassment and persecution is not far off. When that nighttime of persecution comes, perhaps few, if any, will be effectively ministering through the media. Persecution from Hollywood Look for Hollywood to step up its attack against true religion with more expose-type movies. Revivalists and evangelical ministers will continue to be stereotyped as Elmer Gantries, charlatans, cheats, and mad money comedians. More and more movie makers will attempt to debunk puritanical moral values. Gospel preaching churches and ministers will come under special attack, while at the same time the occult and witchcraft will be glorified and sensationalized. I see coming a sophisticated attempt by intellectuals to preach out in films against all revival-type Christians. A kind of atheistic snobbery will motivate a new breed of movie makers into an obsession against any and all religion that inhibits man's hedonistic desires. Persecution from TV Comedies TV comedy shows will become bolder and bolder in poking fun at Christ and true Christians. Comedy writers will mete out blow after blow through comedy shows designed to put down sacred traditions. Eventually, these shows will be punctuated with four-letter words, and anything will go. Television programming will become absolutely blasphemous, and millions of unbelievers will be able to sit in front of their TV sets laughing and mocking as subjects once considered sacred are undermined. I'm not suggesting TV comedy writers have joined some kind of conspiracy against God or religion. What I perceive is writers trying to compete with one another to see who can do the best job of putting down sacred traditions and teachings. It is a very subtle attack against the teachings of Jesus Christ, camouflaged by comedy. Already, comedy shows poke fun at Catherine Coleman, the famous woman evangelist, Billy Graham, Oral Roberts, and lately, even the Pope. The worst is yet to come. The most antichrist comedy ever devised will be aired on network TV without opposition. Persecution through taxation of churches. There is coming an attempt to tax churches and church-related organizations. Atheistic forces, with the help of the American Civil Liberties Union, will push this matter all the way to the Supreme Court. A temporary setback will not stop them from pushing for congressional action. A legal setback by the courts will not stop their long-range action. In spite of recent court decisions, we will eventually have taxation of churches. It will begin as an insignificant kind of nuisance tax, but will soon burgeon into a monster-sized tax that will push some independent churches and missionary societies near bankruptcy. Church-related businesses will be taxed first. That will soon be followed by taxation of all church-owned properties, including parsonages. Church buildings will be exempt. Some very serious court battles lie ahead in regard to this issue, and even Supreme Court decisions can be overturned. I do not see church budgets or church buildings being taxed in the near future, but I do see taxation of church-related enterprises coming soon. I see a snowball effect, and the government will one day be so deeply involved in taxation of church properties that an entire catalog of guidelines will be needed. The IRS may one day become one of the most powerful weapons against the church. It would then be possible for government agencies to maintain a stranglehold on churches. Government agencies are soon going to be delving into the private books of almost every nonprofit religious organization. Those who do not comply with stringent guidelines will be forced to shut down, and there will be no recourse. The Undermining of Christian Action I see three distinct ways in which Satan will attempt to undermine Christian education. Christian schools, colleges, and universities will not escape the coming hour of persecution and harassment. First, expect political harassment, red tape, and very acute financial problems. Federal and state aid will come with more and more strings attached. Second, expect an almost unexplainable student mood of apathy, unrest, and disrespect for leadership. Third, expect the faculty to be infiltrated by teachers and professors who are unwitting tools in the hands of Satan to undermine the foundations of faith and leadership. Satan will attempt to wrest the leadership of these schools and institutions out of the hands of true men of God and place them in the hands of compromising liberals who will not attempt to check the movement toward agnosticism. 
Some campuses will experience spiritual awakenings, but they will be short-lived and will not affect the great masses of students. The leadership of Christian educational institutions must prepare themselves for difficult times ahead, both financially and spiritually. Those who believe in the power of prayer will suffer less. Those who give priority to spiritual matters will experience supernatural intervention and help. For certain, there is trouble ahead on the campus. The financial squeeze will be formidable, and only a miracle will keep some schools open. A few will not survive. The Jesus Revolution Goes Sour The Jesus Revolution among young people will level off, and undisciplined followers will return to their drugs, their free sex, their old ways of life. Persecution will separate the sheep from the goats. Only totally surrendered disciples will be left standing when the fog clears. The time is soon coming when it will no longer be popular to be a Jesus person. Jesus' songs will not be on hit parades, and his name will no longer be a commercial asset to Broadway or Hollywood. The world that once used the name of Jesus so freely is going to turn on him and put him down. I see a replay of the first recorded Jesus movement in history. Jesus came riding into Jerusalem on a donkey to the hurrahs and hosannas of thousands caught up in the excitement of a Jesus movement. Young and old alike ripped branches from palm trees and spread their jackets on the ground so the little donkey could walk over them. They cried, Jesus, Jesus, Hosanna to the King. But that first Jesus movement went sour. A very short time later, that same Jesus stood before an angry crowd that screamed, Crucify him! Away with him! Imposter! The crowd turned against him. The modern Jesus movement has had its crowds too. They have sung the praises of Jesus. Jesus has really been in a hate Christ movement. But look at what's happening today. Many joy poppers are going back to their drugs, and a Jesus revulsion movement is springing up. Young devil worshippers and occultists are becoming a nucleus of a hate Christ type of movement whose chief aim is to harass Jesus people and refute the claims of Christ. Out of this Jesus movement is coming a hardcore of true Jesus people who have completely repudiated their old way of life. They have forsaken their old habits and are committed to a life of service to Jesus Christ. My message to true Jesus people is loud and clear. Prepare for the coming persecution. Prepare to face those hate Christ clubs in school. In many places, Christian young people who take an open stand for Christ will be verbally stoned by those their own age. This revulsion movement against Christ will be personally directed by Satan and carried on by those who are deeply committed to the occult. Jesus people will not only be considered freaks, they will also be called all manner of names and will even be spat upon in the corridors of high schools and colleges. The day may come when Bibles will be plucked from their arms and ripped apart by a laughing crowd of mockers. The harassment may eventually become so violent and widespread that Christian young people will either harden themselves like steel to withstand it or crumble before it and deny their faith. Satan Ministers There will be Satan evangelists, mostly young people, who will actually preach about the power of Satan and who will zealously work at making converts. Ouija boards, tarot cards, horoscopes, and occult books will be passed around and devoured by young people seeking truth. We are going to pay a price for what we believe. Do not think that Christians can escape the trial that is coming. Your endurance will be tested. It will come upon us so undetected and so subtly that we will not recognize it at first. But when it begins, it will fall upon us with lightning-like strokes. The world will not believe what is happening because it will fall as a madness upon the earth. Spiritual Awakening Behind the Iron and Bamboo Curtains While free nations experience a wave of real persecution, the iron and bamboo curtain countries will experience a short period of spiritual awakening. Those who have lived under terrible religious persecution will enjoy a limited period of freedom. God's Holy Spirit will split the iron and bamboo curtains and will seek out and find hungry hearts in Russia, China, and Eastern Europe. God has promised to pour out His Spirit upon all flesh, and that includes the people behind the iron and bamboo curtains. God is bringing to pass a temporary truce between the East and the West for the express purpose of getting the gospel into these communist countries. Japanese and Korean Christians alone can be used of God to reach thousands in China. Christians in West Germany can reach those in East Germany. The path to Russia is through Finland. A tremendous move of the Holy Spirit in Finland can and will spill over into Russia. 
Ironically, while the doors are beginning to close on this side of the curtains, the doors will begin to open on the other side. And after a short period of freedom and spiritual awakening among many, the doors will suddenly close and the persecution madness will begin with intensity and engulf all those nations. You've been listening to Jason Staples and his reading of Chapter 5 of The Vision, Persecution Madness. The Vision is brought to you by World Challenge, a ministry dedicated to empowering, equipping, and encouraging Christians in their daily faith. We are committed to evangelism and helping the least... Next week on The Vision, David Wilkerson foresaw a coming day of sorrows. It's a message we all need to hear. God's message to the unprepared. Next week on The Vision.